Hello and welcome to my kitchen. A little bit of a different video for you today, um, covering a, a problem I've had inside the home rather than outside in the garage. And this concerns a Siemens dishwasher that was uh, going through its wash cycle but not heating correctly. When I looked online for, for a solution as to why the machine wasn't heating correctly, most of it pointed towards either a faulty thermostat, a faulty heating element, or a faulty PCB. Before I took the machine apart, I went down the route of buying a replacement thermostat and element just in case they were the issue. Um, unfortunately, when I took the machine apart, I found that wasn't the case. Uh, luckily, I was able to find a, a very old web article, about eight years old, that showed what the issue with the machine might be. Now, the great thing with this fix is it's absolutely, it's absolutely free, to, uh, free to check. You don't have to take the machine apart at all in order to test it. And all you need to do is, when the machine, say, sort of 20, 20 to 30 minutes into its wash, Take sort of two large jugs of water and just pour them in to the back of the machine. And then if you find that helps the wash cycle heat up, then you know that's the issue. So the problem actually turned out to be with a transfer hose that sits in the bottom of the dishwasher there. And in this video, I'll show you how I went about fixing it. So this gives a quick idea as to the issue I was having with my machine. After it had finished a, a normal wash, the tablet would be undissolved on top of the tray there. Also, the, the dishes and cutlery wouldn't be particularly clean. It's almost like they'd just been, been rinsed off. And also, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't be sort of warm to the touch either. It is also just worth mentioning at this stage, if you do like to wash your pans in a dishwasher, a large pan like this can cause the sort of the blades not to not to be quite as effective when they when they spin around to, to sort of squirt the top tray. So if you are washing big pans like this, don't be surprised if the top items aren't as clean as you would normally expect. It did seem obvious that the machine wasn't wasn't heating up properly. Um, the sort of obvious things seemed to be um, either the, the heater element or the thermostat or possibly the uh, the control board itself. But luckily with this fault, there is an easy way of, uh, of, of sort of diagnosing this without going too far into the machine. An easy way to check if you have a problem with the transfer hose is to open the machine sort of part way through the wash, usually about sort of 20 minutes in. And if it isn't sort of steaming away, what you can do is just get a so a large, or well, two large jugs of water, and then just pour them in into the machine like that. Pouring the water in won't, won't cause any damage, uh, but you should see at the bottom of the machine there, the whole bottom of this machine should be covered, should be covered in water during its wash cycle. If you're not seeing that bottom area full of water, then it's quite probable you have a, you may have an issue with the transfer hose. If you found the process of adding the two jugs of water to the dishwasher during the cycle meant it heat up and wash correctly, most likely that is a problem with the transfer hose. So we're now going to go through the process of getting the dishwasher out and how we, how we locate and clean up that, uh, that transfer hose area. Because my dishwasher is uh, built in top, I have to remove this, uh, this plinth that runs along the bottom of the kitchen first. If you have a freestanding dishwasher, you'll be able to skip this step. Before we remove the dishwasher, it's always worth making sure that the, uh, the power is off to the machine and that the, uh, the, the water feed is turned off. Depending how much sort of movement you have behind the machine, you may, you may be able to pull it out as is, or you may need to disconnect the, uh, the, the, the drain and the filler hose. But this, um, just sort of, let's see if this was just put forward. There we go. As you see on my machine, I've just got these two little ears top and bottom, just have two screws to, uh, to hold them in. So this should just pull out now. So just carefully ease it out, just, you don't want to pull it sort of too hard and just make sure you don't break the rear foot as well. That should just slide, slide free now. So we've just pulled the dishwasher out now. My machine has, is an integrated type, so it has this, um, has this sort of furniture door on the front. We need to be able to access this panel underneath, which I, I I've just, I mean, I you may be able to do this without taking a furniture door off, but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to remove, remove the furniture door so it's a bit easier to see. On this model, the furniture door is held in with four screws here. We've got one, two, three, and four. You'll soon know if, it's, if the screw goes all the way through the door. So if you take out one of these and it's short, you know that it's not holding the, uh, holding the door on. Uh, just be careful after you've got all of the screws out because you'll find that the uh, 
the door, the dishwasher will want to spring back on you. So I'm just going to carefully, carefully close that. Just make sure we don't drop the furniture door. And then that should, that just lifts away. On this front panel, we have two, two little screws either side that need to uh, need to come out, just behind the sound ending there. This lower panel can then be removed. And also the sound deadening behind. Just note with the sound deadening, there's a little cutout here for those cables to come through. This will just, this just lifts out of the way. As I'm facing the machine on the left, we've got two, two little screws, one at the top, one at the bottom, and these need to come out next. With those undone, we can remove this side panel. It pops off at the top first, and then it just lifts out from the slot at the bottom. You don't need to do it, but this cover just sort of pops off just so you get a bit more access to the uh, to the hose there. And down here is the part we're interested in. It runs from the, the top of the of, of the drain part here round to, to a pressure chamber on the side here. And it's called the it's called the balance hose. Um, what you may find is on, on my machine this the, the hose here was blocked. The chamber wasn't too bad. I'm going to get the. I'm just going to show you how to get the uh, how to get this hose off. There is a bit of water still in the machine, um, so I've got a, I've got a tray down. I'm just hoping not too much spills. So let me just pop that off. It's always harder trying to film. There we go. So it's just a little bit of water came out there, so that's fine. And just moving around here, I've got a cloth ready. Again, try and do this one-handed. And I'm just going to pull this. I can pull that hose out. So now we've got the uh, we've got the uh, we've got the hose out, and there it is. So I've got the sink full with some uh, just some warm water and some washy up liquid. I've got one of these. Uh, it's like a it's a bottle brush, and all I'm going to do is put that through the uh, through the hose, and just hope to get all the all the grease out. When I so I had this machine apart, it was very dirty in here. I think I don't think this balance hose is under much pressure, so there is a chance of things kind of getting getting caught up and stuck in there. Uh, if you haven't got a bottle brush, I suppose a, a coat hanger or something else could be poked down just to make sure it's free. Um, and then what I did, I just sort of ran, ran some water through it just to make sure it was, uh, it was totally clear. And that was, uh, that was a problem I was having. So let me just uh, dry this off and we'll get it back into the machine. You may find that this whole, uh, whole pressure chamber is blocked and you can get the, you can get a sort of a bottle brush in there into sort of some some other way and give that a bit of a clean out but if the if this is all sort of gunked up you'll have to take this uh, this whole assembly off and clean out which is a little bit uh, obviously a little bit harder than just doing the hose but you can see what was uh, what was blocking the machine up there the repair definitely works on Siemens machines I think it also is the same for Bosch Neff Gaganau and a few others that all share this same design of this uh, this sort of pressure tank on the side and then a, then, a, then a tube running out of the bottom that goes into the drain. It's basically the transfer of water from the expansion tank on this side through the, the sort of the valves at the bottom here and into the uh, into the heating element on the other side of the machine. So the, ho the hose will just sort of join back in as it did before. It's just a, just a push fit. Make sure that goes in snugly and then just round to the front and again Again, this is on the hand isn't great, but just push that in. Once I put the camera on, I'm just going to give that another push with two hands to make sure that it's secure. So for the rest of the uh, reassembly, it really is exactly the same as it came off. We'll put the side panel back on, and the uh, and the and the front piece here. The decorative door can go back on, and the whole machine can slide back away. We can power it up and and, and check that it's working. So we've got our dishwasher back into place. I'm now going to run a normal cycle with a tablet and just see what happens. So we've just had the, uh, the sort of normal cycle run for a few minutes now. Let's have a quick look inside. So you can see as we open the door, there's a fair bit of a fair bit of steam has come out of it. So that does at least mean that the uh, the, the, the heater part is working properly. The water's getting transferred across. And then if you look in the bottom there, you'll see that the bottom part is full of water. So the uh, the dishwasher is functioning correctly. So hopefully this video was useful to you if your dishwasher hasn't been working properly and this fix has allowed you to, uh, to get it back to running correctly. I was certainly very glad to find the details online for the transfer or the balance hose 
and just showing that if it's blocked up that can cause the dishwasher not to heat properly and also the trick about putting a couple of jugs of water in to see if the machine is working correctly. So hopefully this video has been useful to you and if you did have a faulty dishwasher it's allowed you to fix it. I was certainly very glad that it saved me the sort of well, 600 to 1000 pounds on buying a brand new machine. As always don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel to see more videos. Probably not like these because hopefully we'll be back out in the garage soon. Uh, first race is oh, about it's April the 1st and we're in the middle of February at the moment uh, so not too far now until the uh, until the race season begins. Many thanks, bye.